This is a continuation of the video of 7.1, which was on equivalent trigonometric functions. For, for some reason, my phone stopped working, which meant the video got cut a little bit short. Um, it's not very long to finish it off, so I'm just going to do that right now. So the, the last thing that was on the video that you were watching was I was evaluating the tan of pi over 3. Now remember that when you're doing cofunction identities, and you will have to be asked for a cofunction identity. Okay, the teacher will say, prove the following or find an equivalent cofunction identity for the tan of pi over 3. So you know that tan goes to cotan, and you know cos goes to sine, and sine goes to cos. So when you do tan, tan, the first thing you write is cotangent. And the cotangent is pi over 2 minus the acute angle, so pi over 2 minus theta. Now there are some other cofunction identities that I'm going to show you a little bit later where you're working with the um, 3 pi over 2 or you're instead of subtracting theta you're adding a theta to it and I'll go over those a little um, later when it shows up. I think it's 7.3 before you're using those ones. Okay so let's just finish this off here. So the cotangent you say um, that's pi over 2 minus the acute angle so you don't really need to write all this out if you can figure out in your head that pi over 3 is only pi over 6 away from the 90 degrees. So sometimes it's not as easy as pi over 3. It might be 5 pi over 6 or something that you might need to think a little bit more about. Okay, so the cotangent, I got pi over 2 minus theta, just using this little equation here, pi over 2 minus theta. And I plugged in pi over 3 for my angle, and I found a common denominator, and I got cotangent of pi over 6. So you can double check these things. Put in the tan of pi over 3 and see what you get. Although you could do these ones using the um, equivalent or the, the exact values of your special triangles. Okay, so the last thing that needed to be discussed that I talked away all to myself, and now I'm going to show you show you what I wrote, is that we have um, the three different basic trig functions of sine theta, cosine, and tangent theta. One of these is what we call an even function, and the other two are odd functions. Now, if you recall, an even function means that f at x is equal to f at negative x. In other words, when we talked a long time ago about parabolas back in grade 11, I'll just draw you one here very quickly. Oops, not very pretty, but it's going to work. So if I reflected this about the y-axis, in other words, if I did the um, function at negative x, you would get the same height. So you reflect, if I reflect this one or this one, if I said um, y equals x squared or y equals the negative of x squared, you would get the same thing, right? Once I square the bracket, it's still going to be in the same position. So when we're talking about the trigonometric functions now, so if I have sine theta, which is this one here, and I reflect this about the y-axis, I'm going to end up over here, right? The function would be over here, which isn't sine theta. So that means that the sine of negative theta is equal to the negative sine of theta. Now, you have to say agree that, you know, if I do the sine of negative theta or the cosecant of negative theta, if I flip this over the axis, I, I would have it over here, right? So we're not, it's the same issue because this is not an even function. Now, the other way to explain it, which I think makes much more sense, is to just look at a coordinate plane and figure out where theta and negative theta are. So if I do negative theta here, obviously the sine of negative theta, I'm in the cos quadrant, so that's going to be the negative sine of theta. So in other words, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to, um, if I went all the way around here to 330, the sine of 330 would be negative. So for them to be equivalent, it has to be the negative of that sine theta. So same thing for sine and cos. Now, 
Um, let's flip over to tan here because we have the same problem with tan. It has point symmetry, which means that if I swung this all the way around 180 degrees, I would have the very same function, right? I could, I could swing it around, but it, it isn't an even function. It's an odd function, odd function. So that means that if I take the tan of negative theta, I would have this point over here, which is going to give me negative tan theta because it's going the opposite direction. So tan of negative theta is the negative tan of theta. Same thing if we look at it on the coordinate plane here. If I do a negative theta here, only cos is positive, so it has to be the negative tan of theta and also the negative cotangent of theta. So looking at the even one now, which is the last one we're going to look at, that's this one here, the cosine function. So if you look at cos function, Here's my axis here. It's kind of hard to see. But remembering that cos starts here and goes down like this. So if I reflected this about the y-axis, I would have the very same function over here, wouldn't I? If I just took this and flipped it over, I'd have you flip it over and it's still over here. So the cos of negative theta is equal to the cos of theta, and the secant of negative theta is the secant of theta. And again, you can prove that here on the coordinate plane. If I go theta this way, so, and if I went a negative angle, so negative theta, when I'm in this quadrant, cos is positive. So the cos of negative theta is equal to the cos of theta, and secant negative theta is equal to secant theta. Okay, so that finishes up the end of the cofunction identities. Um, Sorry, I had to break it into two, but I didn't realize till I took a second look at it that it was missing a few minutes of the video. Good luck on your test. Don't forget to subscribe. About 52% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribers. And if you want to support the channel, it would be nice if you did. Thanks. Bye for now.